you don't have to own the real estate. I know that's a big part of what you guys talk about. And that's a great way to build worth. Don't net worth. Don't get me wrong. But you can also build net worth through just your co-hosting and managing these properties too. What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. All right. What's going on, STR Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I am your host, Mike Shogren, and I am doing this one solo today. He is handling some business in a new uh, venture that he's dabbling in right now. Um, so I decided to take this one solo, but I am really excited because re today we're recording this on March 10th and um, we're like just over a week away from STR WealthCon. And I've got one of our stud speakers from the event queued up for you guys here on the podcast. And uh, we've had him on in the past, Mr. Brooke Fouts. We had him on episode 100 and telling his story about how we went from zero to 500 properties. And now he has this company, Vintory, that is specializing in helping hosts grow their inventory and helping property managers, short-term rental managers, grow and scale their portfolios. So without further ado, Brooke, welcome back, sir. How are we doing? What's going on? Good to be here, Mike. I'm uh, upset. He isn't here, but uh, I'm sure he'll uh, be listening later. Well, we'll we'll all hang out in uh, like 10 days in Nashville. He'll be right. up in Nashville. So, so I'm excited, man. So, you know, every time you, every time I talk to you, I feel like I walk away with like at least two pages worth of notes. And I'm not saying that to blow smoke. I'm serious. Cause like you've, you've, you've done it, man. Like you've grown a very sizable company, exited that company. Now you're growing another company that's helping people grow their business. And you've just got a lot of wisdom. You know, you've got the book, Zero to 500 Properties in Five Years. Phenomenal. If you guys haven't read that, go check that out. Um, but you and I were talking offline, and I'm really excited for, for what you've got queued up for Nashville. And so I think it'd be fun to kind of tease it out for the folks that are going to be there and also to give a little FOMO to the folks that aren't going to Nashville for SDR WealthCon. Um, so you've got 10 lessons learned from helping 500 companies now grow their inventory. So it's kind of funny. You, you grew at your portfolio to 500 properties. Now you've helped 500 other companies grow their inventory. So kudos to you, man. I see a common theme there with the number 500. This time though, we did a little bit faster. We did it in four years. So, uh, that's, uh, I got to keep setting the bar higher and higher. Right. I love it. I love it, man. That's great. So how do you, I'm going to let you take the reins, man. So yeah. I don't, I'm looking at the cool infographic here. The, the listeners aren't going to get to see this, but um, maybe I'll link it in the show notes. Yeah, we'll we can find a way to get in the show notes for you guys. Um, but I'll let you take the reins from here, man. And then we'll just go. Let's do it. All right. So uh, first off, I'm super, super excited to be here and really excited to present at STR WealthCon. This is going to be highlight of my year for sure. And what I did, I actually have put a lot of time and effort into this presentation. I mean, this is without a doubt. I've, I've presented at VRMA, I presented at, you know, VRM Intel and a bunch of other conferences, but I am literally more excited about this presentation than anything else. And I've put more and more time into the, uh, the presentation than any other one I've done. And the, what I've done here is it's the top 10 lessons learned from helping over 500 companies grow their str management businesses and it's a proven blueprint for building wealth through co-hosting and uh, so what i figured we do here today is maybe just do a little tease like you said kind of highlighting what we'll be talking about um you know in that in that presentation at str WealthCon. so the first thing is really comes down to and i've seen this from many different angles i've been in this industry for over 15 years and without a doubt you know the the, the lever that you can pull that has the greatest impact to not only your top line revenues, your bottom line profits, but also building your net worth is growing your inventory. You know, if you think about it, you can, you can, you know, grow your inventory, you can increase your marketing, you know, so get different marketing exposure, um, or you can, you know, play with the revenue management, but those last two levers only can do so much. It's really the fastest, quickest, best way <laughs> 
that has a significant impact, the, that lever is growing your inventory. In fact, it's, we figured it out. We've actually gone through an exercise to do this. It is 3.9 to six times more impactful to grow your inventory than it is to increase your marketing, you know, get more exposure or to increase, um, you know, your, your revenue through, you know, kind of um, revenue management. So definitely right there is the best place to go, has the greatest impact. Um, but one thing we've done at Ventory is we actually went there, went out there. And again, so I've asked this question probably over 500 times. As a percentage of your gross booking revenue, what falls to the bottom line in net profits? So if you sign up a property today and it's going to do about five or $50,000 in gross booking revenue, the average net, 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 what falls to that uh, bottom line in profit is almost always about 10% of your gross booking revenue. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a property manager in Aspen charging 50 to 60% commission, or you're like I, like I was in Ocean City charging 13 to 16%, the, because there's other ways to backfill it with margins on cleanings, margins on, clean, on, um, on linens and all these other things, booking fees, but the average is always about that 10%. So if you at, sign up property at 50K, you're gonna make about $5,000 in profits in year one, but you don't keep a property in your rental program for just one year you're gonna keep it in your rental program for many, many years. Now, how do you calculate what a lifetime is? Well, there's a formula to do this and it's called, you just take your one divided by churn. What the heck is churn? Churn is what percentage of your inventory do you lose in a given year? Now, I like to average this over you know, two to three years because you know, we know a couple of years ago with obviously COVID hit, there was this massive you know, selling of, of properties because of, uh, because of COVID and everybody wanted to buy their vacation home out in the woods somewhere to get away from everybody. But on average, when we've asked this about 500 times, it's almost always about 10% as well. So if you take one divided by 10%, you come up with 10, 10 years. So the average lifetime a property stays in a rental program, you know, after asking over 500 companies is about 10 years. So here's a little quick hack. So to calculate, you have 5,000 in profit, you have a 10 year lifetime for that property, you have a $50,000 lifetime in profits from one property. Not bad. Um, now, here's a quick hack. Assuming you fall within industry averages within net margins and also churn, whatever your gross booking revenue is, that is what your lifetime value is going to be. So you sign up a property doing 75K, your lifetime value is going to be 75K. Now, I would even argue that number is actually a little bit light because what happens over 10 years? That, that number does not stay flat. I mean, I look at my property I had, you know, 10 years ago, I'm doing double about what I was, you know, 10 years ago. So, but that's a good general rule of thumb. So as soon as you go out there, sign a new property, you're making a ton of money from cash flow. It's fantastic. It's a great way to do it. But it's not just the cash flow from this. If and when you decide to sell your company, the true value of your company are those contracts. I hate to say it. It's not your, it's not your beautifully wrapped trucks. It's not your kick-ass office. The true value of your management company are those contracts. And you will get a check for each and every one of those. Now, the most popular method of valuing a vacation rental management company is uh, um, uh, your earnings, a multiple of earnings. And it's anywhere between four and six times your net profit. So, or EBITDA, otherwise known as. So if you, you're just using an average number of five uh, as a multiple. And by the way, this is not a lesson on valuing vacation rental management companies. I'll let the professionals. There's a great guy, Jacoby Owen with C2G Advisors. He's done more M&A transactions than anybody in this space. I'll let him give those presentations and he's done a ton of them. But so if you take that property we just talked about before, that's making $5,000 in net profits and an average multiple of five, that gives you a $25,000 value per property, per contract. That's, that's a lot of freaking money. So you make all this cash flow and if and when you decide to sell, you're going to get a check on average about 25K per contract. But just to validate those numbers, what I did is our team went out there and we looked at all the public data that we could find to figure out, you know, let's look at some public comps and see what was out there. And here's what we found. If you look at Vacasa about three or four years ago, actually it might've been more than that, uh, they purchased Wyndham Vacation Rentals. They paid $18,000 per contract. If you look at Vacasa's investor deck from July uh, a year ago, they said in that investor deck, they paid $21,000 per contract. But here's the deal. They still had a 25% IRR, inter internal rate of return, even after paying $21,000 per contract. Um, but this is not also just in the US. So you go look at UK, Vitruvian Partners, private equity company out of uh, UK. 
they bought uh, Sykes Holiday uh, Cottages for $27,000 per contract. But the best comp, without a doubt, is this gentleman I mentioned before, Jacoby Allen with C2G Advisors. He's done $200 million in transactions last year. He has said publicly on stage, I was on a panel with him down at uh, a conference in Austin. He said that the average contract was $33,000 per contract across $200 million worth of transactions. So to me, that is the best comp out there. You can't get any better. And I can validate that because we've had probably close to a dozen inventory partners. Unfortunately, that's the downside of being pretty successful is you help them grow and then they sell their business and then they, they leave you. So, but we've had about a dozen companies in the last year sold and they sold around that 30,000 was, was about right. Now I will tell you, we had one company even last year that sold for $75,000 per contract. And I'll give you one last one here and then I'll let you talk, Mike, because I feel like I'm hogging this, but uh, Vacasa purchased Turnkey uh, last year. They paid one hundred and three thousand dollars a contract. So again, these contracts is just validates these contracts are the true value of your company. They're super valuable. The, you don't have to own the real estate. I know that's a big part of what you guys talk about, and that's a great way to build worth. Don't net worth. Don't get me wrong, but you can also build net worth through just through co-hosting and managing these properties too. Well, I'm glad we kicked off with that. And I know you and I have talked about this before and in the last episode, but <clears throat> when I was building the co-hosting business, one of the things that a lot of people kind of gave me shit about was like, dude, you're doing all this work, but you're not building any equity. And I'm like, you don't understand business. I'm like, I'm not building this job. I'm building this infrastructure with this vision that one, it's going to give me cash flow without me trading time for money because I'm building the infrastructure. But two, I build this correctly, I can sell it to somebody just 100%. like any other business can be sold. And like nobody was understanding that. And then At I have absolutely. these conversations with you that has done it at a super high level. And I'm like, exactly. Exactly what I was talking and, about. And it's predictable, right? It's predictable recurring revenue. It is a great business model. It's it's actually now it's funny because I came from vacation rentals and then I went into SaaS, you know, software as a service and technology. And much of what we do is is SaaS. And there's a reason why a lot of these SaaS companies are getting crazy 10, 20 times your revenue kind of multiples. It's because it's pre re predictable recurring revenue. Um, one of my favorite books is a book called by a guy named Tanzu. Uh, it's called Subscribed. It just talks about how we're moving to a subscription economy. So I don't want to go on a tangent, but it's just this is a predictable recurring revenue business model. And it's reason why. Well, I was just at this conference at uh, VRMA in Kansas City. And there was probably a dozen private equity companies floating around there and they are acquiring, they are buying up these management companies left and right. And they are doing it. Many of these companies you don't even know are getting purchased. They're just doing it under the radar. And um, the key though, one thing to add, and you kind of touched on it, is you can't be everything. Like for you to be able to truly sell the company and get the highest multiple, you have to have the systems and the team in place. If you are the owner acquisition person, exclusively owner acquisition person, if you were the one that has all the relationships with all the owners, if you were, you know, if you were the everything store, you were the GM that needs to be there every day and the, the wheels fall off the bus when you leave, you're going to get a discount when you sell. So just like you said, you need to put those people in place, get a good GM, get a good biz dev person so you can literally step away and the business doesn't miss a beat. That's when you get that optimized, that highest multiple, you're going to be closer to that six times and uh, six times EBITDA or even higher if you're growing super fast too. So that's what they're looking at. They're looking at the inventory. They're looking at the location. You're looking at how involved is the owner and um, can can that owner step away? But also one of the most important things that gets on that higher multiple is really how fast are you growing? Interesting. Because that was, that was, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but that was going to be the last question that I was going to ask. The one that was 75K, was that because they were managing luxury properties or what was that factor where there was just so much more spread? Two factors. Um, the first is they were growing unbelievably fast. And, you know, she, <laughs> the inventory that she had uh, was unbelievably high end. Um, it was, you know, every property was doing well over north of $100,000. Um, but at the same time, it, again, she was growing fast. And she pretty much said, she's like, look, if I wait another year, my company's going to be worth double next year. So why not just get it now? And, and she had the systems in place. She had the business development team in place. So literally she could just step out and it would continue to grow. And she was right. The next year was going to be worth, you know, even more. So they, they figured they'd kind of pay a little bit of a premium. So that's a critical piece of that is that, that high growth. Mm. Love it. Love it. So yep. why don't we, we'll keep it to like three nuggets 
on this three out of the 10. So okay. what do you think? What do you think for number two? Where do we want to jump to? I would say, let's see. I, you know what? One of the biggest things, um, what we start with kind of foundational is building out your key messaging building blocks and, um, really having a good, um, you know, owner marketing. And we've actually created something that we, we, every time we onboard a new partners, uh, we go through and we build out the seven key messaging building blocks. Um, and, um, it's, uh, it, it's, it, this becomes the baseline for all your marketing. This becomes the baseline for your landing pages, for your postcards, uh, for your owner presentations or any kind of marketing that you're going to do to owners. Um, this is pretty important. So it starts with, uh, your USP, your unique selling proposition. Like what's, what's the one thing that sets you apart versus your competition, uh, for like outside of our industry, it's like Tom's shoes, right? Buy one, get one, you know, or buy one, give one, um, so we have, I'm trying to think of some examples, some of our partners have used, we have one partner, he has a hundred percent retention of owners in his rental program. So he highlights that we have another one, uh, uh, that was a vacation rental man, uh, manager of the year by the VRMA. We have another one that was uh, Maui small business entrepreneur of the year. So like, what is that one thing that sets you apart? Put it on there. The next thing, uh, would be, um, features and benefits. You know, what are those key features and benefits within your rental program? that make, uh, that set you apart and that are, that our owner is interested in. Here's a key learning though. It's very often things that everybody else does, but nobody highlights, <laughs> you know, it could be, you know, dynamic pricing or revenue management. I mean, at this day that's table stakes, but nobody's talking about it. So if you're the only one talking about it, you're the one that looks like the, looks like the star. Um, here's another one, trust accounting. You know, many states require trust accounting, but nobody talks about it, but explain why that's a big deal. Um, you know, making sure that their money is safe uh, and it, you're not embezzling it and it's not going to be used and, um, you know, for operating uh, accounts. So just highlight the heck out of that. It blows my mind. I very, very rarely ever see anybody talk about trust accounting. And, you know, and many companies use that, you know, because they have to, but it, also a lot of companies use it and they don't have to, um, but they don't highlight it. But again, to me, it's a key differentiator. Up next would be um, trust icons. So trust icons would be if you're an Airbnb super host, uh, it's a form of like credibility, trust and credibility. Uh, if you're um, a member of the VRMA, put that on there. If you're an Airbnb super host, highlight it. If you're A plus rating on Better Business Bureau, put that on there. Again, it, it subconsciously builds trust and credibility um, with your targets you're going after. Um, another one is uh, social proof. So social proof it is it's like a psychological phenomenon that people trust what other people have to say. And if you can get a testimonial is a great example of that. And if you can put those testimonials on there and the more they kind of look and feel like them. So if you're targeting, like we, we do some micro targeting. So if we're micro targeting a specific building or community, we would want a testimonial on that postcard or on that landing page from an actual owner in that building uh, or that community as well. And it kind of builds a little bit more trust and credibility. They feel that they've already done the vetting. And if they've already vetted you and they signed up, then it, they, you must be a good uh, company. Um, one another one is uh, called compelling offers. Like you know, it's the mafia offer. You know, make them an offer they can't refuse. And it's you know, my kind of um, acid test for compelling offer is envision your target is sitting over the trash can looking at their mail, and they're just dropping the mail in the trash can or the recycling bin. And then what is your you know, what is your compelling offer on that postcard that makes them? from dropping in that recycling bin or that trash can and set it aside to contact you later. Um, some good examples of compelling offers. Um, you know, maybe it's a free smartphone package. Uh, maybe it's um, zero commission for the first six months. You know, maybe it's a reduced commission for the first year. Something that kind of gets some, you know, knocks them off their socks a little bit and just activates that reticular activator to kind of set it aside and, uh, and want to call. Um, uh, let's see here. We have risk reversals. So risk reversals reduce friction in the buying process. So, um, you know, some examples, uh, zero, uh, let's see, um, zero startup fees, uh, no long-term commitments, hundred percent satisfaction guaranteed. You know, uh, infomercials are infamous for this, you know, uh, you know, 30 day money back guarantee, 60 day, double your money back guarantee, something like that. Um, say what you will about Vacasa and turnkey or in Evolve, but they have some of the best risk reversals out there. Vacasa used to have one where we guarantee to beat your current numbers by $5,000. Evolve probably has the best risk reversal I've ever seen. It is uh, 
you can get a hundred percent refund of your management fees. Um, and, um, if you want, if you choose, if you cancel, like, how do you say no to that? So you've gone through their whole entire pro proposal and they say, look, if you want, if you're not happy, not satisfied, we'll give you a hundred percent refund of our management fees. Now, here's the thing. When you read the fine print, it's, it's only between month six and seven, which you're probably sitting on, you know, 30, 40, 50, $80,000 in reservations, why you're going to walk away from it, or how can you walk away from it? And you have to go through another, a couple other hoops, but again, it's a great risk reversal. And, you know, I've seen their sales presentation. It's it's pretty powerful. Um, and then the last one, the most important one is every single marketing piece needs to have a CTA call to action. And I, I would give people different ways to reach out. So we've been leveraging the heck out of QR codes right now on postcards, and it goes directly to landing pages. And then we can actually track it back and find out uh, who actually scanned the QR code. So even if they didn't fill out a form, because we know 80 to 95% of the traffic doesn't actually fill out forms, if they don't fill out a form, we can get them a notification and, you know, six times out of 10 or so, five times out of 10, we can track it back to who actually scanned it. And then we can do some follow-up messaging directly to them because we said, hey, they took at least a little bit of interest to scan that QR code. Or it could be a simple, you know, my my mom, she's, she doesn't want to text, right? She's going to call. My brother, he's not, he doesn't want to call anybody. You know, he'll text. So, you know, give them different ways of reaching out. Call or text this number. Scan this QR code. We go to this landing page. Fill out a landing page. I mean, we had my my business partner was telling me he's like, Brooke, we only need to do the QR codes because we want people to scan that QR code. I'm like, my 75 year old mother doesn't know how to do a QR code, so I'm not going to make that the only thing on there. So give them different ways to to do it. So those are the seven key messaging building blocks. Again, USP, features and benefits, trust icons, social proof, compelling offer, risk reversals, and everything needs to have a CTA or call to action. I love that. And one thing that stuck out to me still from our last interview was when you threw out the numbers of the, it's one thing to do the marketing, but then you need to be answering the phone when it rings. Right. And some of the stats you were sharing last time, it was like every hour that went by or whatever, like the, the reduction in sales was astronomical. Yeah. Like the longer you wait or the longer it takes for you to get back to somebody. It's kind of, so it's kind of ironic. So all of our partners come to us. They want all the shiny things. They want, you know, these 500 plus partners that have signed up with us. They want the pretty postcards. They want the pretty landing pages and all the marketing materials. And that's great. You need to have that. But it really just comes back to the, ba back to the basics. It comes back to blocking and tackling. It comes back to like those core fundamentals. And it really, the number one thing is, dude, are you answering the phone? <laughs> Quit. And if you don't answer the phone, do you call them back quickly? Um, and that's probably the most important thing. It's speed and responsiveness. You are going to get the call. I mean, almost every single time. So, uh, there's a guy named Mark Roberge. Uh, he's really famous. He was a former chief, uh, revenue officer at HubSpot. He was like part of the founding team. So he's, he's got more data on this than anyone you think of from his days from, from HubSpot. He, uh, now actually teaches, uh, sales at Harvard. Um, and he has a venture firm, uh, as well, but he said, um, on a couple podcasts, he says, if you call connect with a lead immediately or within two minutes, you are 10 times more likely to close it than waiting just one hour, 10 times, two minutes to one hour. So it just talks about how important that is. And you're 10,000 times more likely to close it, uh, that waiting a day. So when that lead comes across, you better answer the phone. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of lunch or dinner, pick up that damn phone and get it. And that's the beauty of like, not to give inventory a plug here, but all of our campaigns have call tracking numbers and you can see which campaign it actually came from. So, you know, it's not a junk call. It's actually from a postcard call or a landing page or whatever it happens to be. Um, but here's the thing, Mike, when we, when we went out there and we asked our partners, we said, Hey, are you responsive? Are you answering these calls? Oh, absolutely. You don't understand. Uh, Jane, she's fantastic. She picks up every call, but the data doesn't back it up. <laughs> So we secret so, shop. So called. Yes. We secret shop a hundred vacation rental managers and the vast majority missed it. 34% of the time did they pick up the damn phone. So two thirds of the calls didn't even get picked up. Then we left a message and they only called us back 57% of the time. <laughs> um, so the vast majority of these calls are going unanswered and then they're calling the next one. So it's like, if you pick up the call, you, you've done nine tenths of the work, you know, just by picking up the phone. But here's the thing, when we called the mega managers, the, the ones that everybody gives a hard time and says they have awful service, which they may on some parts, but guess what? The Vacasas, the turnkeys, the Evolves, they have a 100% connectivity rate. It's because 
they know the value of inventory and they know the value of picking up these uh, calls and how important that speed and responsiveness. It reminds me of that quote from Woody Allen, 80% of success is just showing up. Yeah. And the, this point hit me. It was like a punch in the face when I went to Grant Cardone's conference, 10X in like 2018 or 19. And he talked about that. He's like, it's never the best product or the best service that wins. It's the best marketed product yep. and service that wins. And that's what they do. And they know that. And they're really good at marketing and they're good at the blocking and tackling. So they do the marketing and then they make sure somebody answers the phone. <laughs> like, yep. That's it. Right. And it sounds so basic, but like ABCs, man. That's right. It, but you know what, though? It is actually it, it is pretty. It sounds simple and it's basic. But to do it consistently and have that person that's there, um, it, 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 it's, uh, it's challenging to do. I mean, we have, um, we have a fractional business development team, and I was actually on site with him, uh, and we were literally in the middle of dinner at a really nice steakhouse, and a call came in, and he literally stood right up and took that call. You know, here it is. We've had a, you know, a bourbon and a couple glasses of wine at 7 o'clock at night. We're just sitting down and getting ready to eat this nice, fancy steak, and he jumps right up to go get that, uh, to get that call. Cause again, he understands the power of, uh, speed and responsiveness. hundred percent. Let's talk All about right. inbound marketing. I, I don't think I talked about that last time. I think that, uh, we, we just highlighted it on a little bit. You want to, does that work yeah, for you? That. Yeah. hundred cool. percent. So let me, well, actually let me set the stage. So there's really like, there's, there's three ways you can market. Um, you can do outbound, which we recommend doing this on an omni-channel method. And if you go to uh, STR WealthCon, I'll talk about that in depth. You have inbound marketing, which is what are those more inbound marketing channels that you can create to kind of drive leads. And then you have referral marketing. So those are the three major buckets as I see it um, for marketing. So we're going to talk about uh, inbound marketing right now. So you know, we, we, we do a lot of really cool creative stuff on an outbound basis and it works but i truly believe the best roi over the long haul is actually using inbound marketing methods um it is gonna it's gonna be much more advantageous uh it's gonna be a, a much more lower cost the problem is it takes a lot of time <laughs> you got to build out content you got to do all these different things and it's expensive and i know that 99 percent of short-term vacation rental managers they're not going to do it because they don't have the bandwidth to do it so here's a couple like quick wins, quick, easy ways that you can kind of implement inbound. So I'm not talking about, you know, building out the content strategy and the, the blogs and the articles, and you need to do that. But again, these are more quick wins. So the first one is interactive content. Um, interactive content is a great way to build out some content that uh, drives inbound leads. So my, my buddy, David Angotti at SmokyMountains.com, he built an interactive uh, leaf, fall uh, foliage uh, leaf map. So you can just take this little slider and it'll show you how the fall foliage is uh, based on the date uh, on the calendar, which is pretty cool. The cool thing is this got picked up. Not only is this great source for like guests coming into town and then obviously they can book some of his vacation homes, but it's also a great way it gets picked up by USA Today. It gets picked up by um, Travel and Leisure magazine. I mean, it's been Wall Street Journal. I mean, last I think it's had like over 10 million unique visitors to it. Last year alone, it had over 4 million unique visitors. So Great example. But if you want something more specific, um, I would build out an ROI calculator or a rental income estimator. And there's a great tool out there called Calconic. Calconic is an interactive calculator builder. So if you can envision a calculator, like in this interactive calculator, you can build it with Calconic. And there's a couple other similar ones out there, but that's one that uh, I've used in the past. So uh, what I would recommend is build out, we've done this for many of our partners, is build out this calculator that'll show your uh, prospective owners that are interested in coming to your website that they can figure out how much their property will do. So rather than like kind of doing an air DNA thing where the numbers are off sometimes with their uh, estimator, you can build it out yourself. So you, you have a little slider, you take it to four bedrooms, three baths, you know, what's the view, you know, scale of one to 10, what's the view, one, scale of one to 10, what's the, the furnishings and the decor like? And it's, you're not trying to get an exact number. You just want to give a little tease to get somebody excited and interested. And if you want, you can gate the, um, uh, the results where they have to actually enter their email address where you can show the results. Or if they want to see like an in-depth analysis or a customized pro forma, they can inquire with an email. But that is a great tool to generate uh, inbound leads. And again, what happens is, well, if you partner and co-brand it with a realtor, now the realtor 
can uh, start sharing that out. You can build specific landing pages with those uh, co-branded with them. And we found the partners that do this, this becomes the number one most traffic page on their website by a long shot. Um, and then they, they start forwarding those out to realtors and the realtors start pushing them over there uh, as well. Something very similar to that, another interactive uh, content, and we've done this for a couple of our partners, is, um, you know, we, we found these partners were getting inundated with tire kickers. These, you know, these buyers that wanted to buy, hey, will you build me a rental projection for this property? And then, you know, a week later, oh, I changed my mind. I want to do this property. So what we've done is we've created the top 20 properties that are currently on the market um, and you build a rental projection for each one of them. And you use a tool called Batch Geo. If you're not familiar with Batch Geo, it's a mapping uh, platform. And the best part with all of these interactive uh, uh, contents is you don't need to know how to write any code. You just build it and then you embed it in your website, in your web page. Um, so with this case, again, you said, all right, what are the top 20 properties that are currently on the market? You attach a rental projection to each one of them. And then this gives you a tool to go to realtors to and say, hey, if you ever have any, uh, if you have any prospects that are interested in bur purchasing any real estate, I would just recommend you send them to this link. And then you're going to them with value. You're not just saying, give me leads, give me leads, give me leads. You're actually giving them uh, something uh, of value. So those are two forms of uh, interactive uh, content. Um, let's talk about another one it would be PPC. So pay-per-click. So here's the thing with PPC. It's a great lead source on inbound. The problem is there's very search, very little search traffic. The majority of the search traffic that's currently out there is obviously on the guest side. It's almost like 10 to one. So what do you do? You gotta, you gotta make sure you're casting a super wide net and you gotta know what those right keywords are. So there's two tools out there. One's called Ahrefs. And the other one is called SEM Rush, and those we actually have a full digital marketing team on our team, and those are the key. That's how we establish the keywords we're using. So we've established about fifty to seventy keywords, and you got to go wide. You got you can't just say, you know, vacation rental management for this area or property management for this area. You've got to use a bunch of different keywords. And again, we found that using uh, Ahrefs and SEM Rush. Um, the third thing uh, is use Google My Business. Uh, it's now called Google Business Profile, but GMB is a goal. Like when you set up a GMB account, first off, it's free. <laughs> Let me say that again. It is free. But as soon as you sign up for it and you tag it to vacation rentals, you instantly, Google instantly gives you a lift in SEO power automatically. I mean, you just jump up ahead of like 90% of the people that don't have GMB accounts tied to uh, a vacation rental listing. So that just instantly gives you that lift. And for every review you get, you instantly get more and more. So we have a, a common, you know, we have a partner on our platform that you know very well, based out of Arizona. He uses GMB like crazy. He gets about 50 leads a month from Sad. GMB. His, yeah. not, his results are wild. I know. He says every time he gets a new five-star review, he, he gets another five leads. So it is the quickest, easiest way to do it. And here's what you do. The last thing you got to do is send your owners to it, right? Send your owners to that page and have them fill out the review for you. And look, between you and me and everybody that's listening, <laughs> don't send the owners that you know you have some high issues with, right? Just send the owners that you like and you know are going to give you a good review there. You know, I'm not saying to make them up, but just just send the right uh, owners to that. Believe there is reviews. It will make a huge difference. And it's amazing the traffic that GMB gets. Uh, and the SEO value that Google is to that. All right, let's see. Um, social media. So uh, a lot of people obviously but know about social media, but we have one partner. They created a Facebook group for their area. It was like, what's happening Gulf Beach or something like that. And it, it has 55,000 members in that Facebook group now. 55,000. So everybody that lives in that area, everybody that owns a home in that area, Every guest that travels to that area is on that page all the time. And they it, look, does it take some time to invest in there and and put you know content in there and talk about all the different things that are happening? Absolutely. And they they do a lot of uh, philanthropy. And every time they do anything uh, philanthropic, they highlight it on there. But guess what they also do? Every time they get a new property, they highlight it on there too. And they put the time and effort into creating this page. So every once in a while, you can do it. Now, I don't know what the opt you know the, the optimal number of you know kind of more business listings versus uh, uh, other, you know, type of like what's going on in the area, but it's probably, you know, two to, you know, two to eight ratio or something like that. But, but this is, here's what happens though. Every time somebody inevitably, somebody's going to go in there and ask, 
hey, who is the best uh, vacation rental management company? You know, I'm looking to, you know, somebody manage this property. And they have this whole team of advocates now in there that all recommend them. So it's, again, it's kind of that, it's a form of social proof where they're recommending them. And th those are laydowns. You don't have to sell those. They're super simple. So again, it took some time to set up, but it was a, a great strategy. So if your area doesn't have a what's happening in that market, set it up now, start plugging it, building it out. It's amazing how quickly that'll build over time. The last piece, I guess, here on inbound marketing would be um, really to stop your leak in your sales funnel uh, with retargeting. Again, 80 to 95% of traffic that goes to a landing page doesn't fill out the form. So, and you know, you want to do anything in your power to bring them back and nurture them. So use Make sure, you know, specific targeting, obviously not retargeting for guests. This is a very specific targeting uh, pixel, um, you know, for on your property management page. Uh, put that on there because, again, you want to nurture them back. So here's the thing. When we actually went, we actually did another secret shopping tool. We went to um, a bunch of different vacation home management companies' websites. We went to their property management page and we left that page and we wanted to see if anybody was retargeting us. 80% of the time, they weren't retargeting us. Only 20% of the people were actually retargeting us. So use um, uh, Google T Tag Manager to do that. Uh, keeps track of all your tags in one place, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Google, whatever it happens to be, you can keep it all in there. Keeps it nice and organized. Um, yeah, that would be my, my kind of my five top key uh, hints on doing an inbound strategy. I love it. You know, it's interesting. On the... We've done a really good job with this. Most of my focus the last couple of years has been on the hotel side of things. And we've, we've really gone down the rabbit hole on this. And one of our best inbound strategies was kind of like doing what you were saying with the local Facebook group, but getting involved in the local associations. Because then you turn every other business owner in there into a referral system for you. Yep. It's like, hey, if you know somebody coming into town, somebody's always going to ask like, hey, where's a good place to stay around here? Oh, you should yep. go stay with Mike over at the Cove or over at the Beverly or over here. And like we're 60 to 70% direct between those properties. Wow. Like it's That's valuable. super high. And again, it's a different thing. I'm talking like direct yep. bookings versus client acquisition, but it works the same. If I was aggressively trying to grow my business, I would definitely do that as well. So. Well, that, I'll give a little tease on the last one there. Um, you know, so again, I said uh, outbound with omnichannel, inbound uh, marketing, and the last one was a referral marketing strategy. And the referral, it's two parts. It's not only realtors are a big part of that, but it's influencers. Who are the influencers in that area? So just like you're doing all the omnichannel uh, marketing methods to you know and your ICP, your ideal customer profile, you also want to do uh, an omnichannel marketing approach to those influencers. So establish who they are. Add them to those email lists. Add them to those uh, direct mail lists. Let them see your flyers. Let them see your postcards. Let them see your messaging and what you do that makes that sets you apart and makes you unique. So when they are thinking of somebody, they're uh, they're thinking directly of you. Um, we actually I'm going to massacre this, but uh, story, but I, I probably should know this. So we we have a uh, we have this crazy sales guy, and he wanted to prove that direct mail worked. So he actually uh, he. He pretended like he was somebody with the city. This is how crazy this guy is. He pretended like he was somebody with the city and he went around to a hundred homes in a community and, you know, put on a vest and put a, got a clipboard and started asking him questions about if they had any recommendations for realtors and things like that. And then he went to, um, at, he, the, the stats were like, no, it was like, a, it was like spread out across a lot of other people, like to get like a baseline. Then he went to another community. He did the same number. And for eight weeks, he sent postcards to these people <laughs> and with a make made up person, literally a made up realtor. And when he asked them <laughs> to go through this, it was something like it was some insane number. It was like 70 percent of the people recommended a realtor that he made up <laughs> just because he was just because wow. he was sending out this flyer <laughs> to this. Wow. So literally 70 percent of the people. And that might not be the exact number. I don't want to, I, I wasn't planning on talking about this today, but it was like something, it was, it was a crazy number, but they recommended a realtor that didn't even exist. Power of marketing, man. <laughs> oh yeah. my God. I'll get, I'll get the real stats for that and we'll share them, but it, it's something close to that. I love it. I love it. Well, anything else you want to, you want to drop in before we uh, wrap up? You know what I would say? Well, first off, I'm super excited uh, for SDR WealthCon. Um, can't wait. I hope everybody, well, I was going to say, 
you're, you're already sold out. So it's not like we can get any more people there, but I, I hope everyone's ex as excited as I am. The last thing I would say, just to kind of close out on this, is the number one method by far is consistency. Um, it just comes down to, are, are you doing this, you know, in a, the, 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 the companies we've seen, over 500 companies, the companies that have a proactive, cons consistent approach that treat this as a core part of their business are crushing it. They're rocking it. The ones that dabble in it, the ones that stick their toes in, they try it once or twice, and then they go back and they don't do it. Then six months later, they say, all right, I got to try it because I need inventory. It's kind of like this, you know, knee jerk reaction. It never works. The ones that look at this as a, as a, an important part of their business are the, and the ones that invest in it are the ones that are most successful. Um, we've seen it time and time again, because they understand it's going to increase again, their top line revenue. It's going to increase their profits and it's going to help them build their, their net worth. Love it. Love it. Um, well, again, super pumped to hang out with you. Um, where can folks learn more about you and Vintory before we get in the last question? Yeah, real, real simple. Just go to Vintory.com, V-I-N-T-O-R-Y.com, or you can follow us on LinkedIn. We're, we're really active on LinkedIn. Feel free to check us out there. Yep. And again, make sure you go find Brooke at STR WealthCon in Nashville. Uh, yeah. He will be there. He will be tearing it up on the, on the main stage and right. uh, hanging out. So... Thank you again for coming on here. Really looking forward to hanging out with you in a couple of weeks. Before Absolutely. we get out of here, what would be your number one secret to success? And I don't remember what you answered last time, but I'm curious. What is your number one secret to success with short-term rentals? Do I, I think I know what I said last time, but I can't, I'm not hundred percent sure. But I, so then I'm just going to answer my gut or knee jerk reaction. Um, it's, it's people, man. It's the team. It's the team you associate with and making sure that you have, for me, backfilling my deficiencies. You know, I know what I'm good at and I'm, there's a lot of things that I'm not good at, but what I can do is I can recruit a really good team and I can recruit people that are really good at the things I'm not good at. And when you get that complimentary skill set, you know, magic happens. Love it. Love it. Well, Brooke, thank you again for coming on here, sir. Really appreciate it for our listeners out there. Hope you guys have an amazing week and uh, hopefully we see you guys in Nashville. All right. All right. Talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks, hey, STR Nation. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes. And we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.